but there's so much and now I mean so many of the bands that we talk about and we review and listen to you know you're big into Stradivarius which yeah. is that's kind of the, the European style of power metal which you know, some people don't like but yeah know. and what's tough with this genre is you're gonna have bands like like Camelot that are gonna be put into this uh, genre but some of their stuff I wouldn't say is all is all power metal I and mean I don't yeah I could definitely see I I I think they, they tread the border of power yeah. metal. Because um, very symphonic and... Yeah, it definitely, I think gothic. it has the, the, yeah, the symphonic elements of power metal, but I don't think it has a lot of the vocal aspects down. Right. Um, speaking of which, they don't even have a, a, an official lead singer at this point. Oh, yeah. Roy left, and I know yeah. Fabio from Rhapsody of Fire is filling in on their tour, but right. I don't think they've uh, announced an official lead singer, but that's uh, another yeah. story altogether. Rhapsody of Fire is... Uh, is a good example of mm -hmm. a solid power metal band. Um, I, mean, I think one of the, the kings of, of modern power metal now must be Blind Guardian, which you know, Chester, you've actually yeah. you know you've encountered some Blind Guardian uh, in your in your journey. You know, power metal until uh, you uh, turned me on to Blind Guardian, I'd really just stopped listening to power metal. You know, during like MTV when they actually played music. There was a lot of power metal bands on there when they were, you know. Oh, yeah, and definitely, you know, the power metal of, of the MTV era was, like, Poison, which, you know, by today's standards of power metal isn't power metal at all. But yeah, yeah. at that point, it kind of did have the, the basics. Well, Headbangers Ball was on there, right? So. Yeah, Headbangers Ball, which used to play metal, and now they play metalcore and hardcore. And we've already gone down that road before. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to do that yeah. again. <laughs> but, I mean, some of the, the great things about power metal, and I think this is why... So many people, when they start to listen to metal, power metal is the place to start because the music is upbeat, it's up tempo, and it's about being empowered. It's about being powerful. It's not, you know, screaming. You know, there's a lot of clean singing. These guys really, these guys are true musicians. Oh yeah. And you, you don't see, you know, slouches don't play power metal because it's just it's too intricate a style. A lot of solos and stuff. A lot of solos. A and, lot of double bass um, for drumming. Yep. And the keyboards become very essential not just as a lead instrument in the case of, you know, a band like Echo Terror, as we talked about before, mm -hmm. but as kind of providing that atmospheric background. I mean, look at Blind Guardian. What would Blind Guardian be without the, like, the keyboards and the orchestrated instruments? Oh, yeah, yeah. It just wouldn't make sense. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, if you're into stuff like that, then power metal is a good place to start. Now, Mermaid, are you, when you got into metal, that was one of the first places you went was power metal. Yeah, you, you showed me. like Aventasia and stuff like that. Even before that, you, you showed me, uh, Dragon Force, mm -hmm. which was like that, that gateway, yeah, that gateway that we always talk about. Yeah, and that that's what got me into it first. And really, I I was even I was all for the the clean singing because at that time I wasn't crazy about uh, some of the growling. Yeah. And, uh, that was you were also showing me some Opeth at that time, and I uh, that was the time I was trying to get into it. It took me a couple months to get into Opeth, but um, yeah, it went from, from dra uh, Dragon Force to. Um, to Communic. Remember when yep. I got in Communic? They actually have a new album. Uh, Gamma Ray. Gamma Ray. Yeah, you were in Gamma Ray for a short period of time. Yeah, but I remember ordering tons of different um, uh, power metal bands. Uh, Ed Guy. Ed Guy. You band ordered band a bunch of Stradivarius. You had like the Elements yeah, the albums. Stuff, yeah. yeah, that was definitely that one big phase that you went through, which really helped to build. Because power metal, while you know, Dragon Force is a gateway to power metal, power metal is a gateway to other kinds of metal. Right. Because, you know, it starts you off, you kind of go like, okay, this is what metal is about. Let's say you're really into solos, then you go, okay, well, maybe some of this thrash is good or, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Sometimes so, the more gothic stuff will get you into things like Nightwish after a while, yep. things like that. Yeah, because Nightwish has power metal elements in there because they share the symphonics. Right, that's actually how I came across them after I was, like, going into Camelot for a mm -hmm. while. Then, then I kind of fell into Nightwish and I, even getting into, like, Primal Fear yep. and uh, Iced Earth, you could throw on that boat. Um, Ice Earth is another one of those bands that kind of lays on the fringe of yeah, power metal, I yeah, think. Yeah, because they had the vocals for it. Yeah, but I, I don't necessarily think they're a you know, traditional or true power metal band, but like, well, Matt Barlow's vocals, obviously, he yeah. had the range to, yeah. to deliver all of that. Um, but that's that's kind of, you know, as we talk about every time we've mentioned the genre, there's always going to be those bands that, that kind of tread along the line, and you're not really sure where to put them, and that's why the classification becomes so hard. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know bands like Blind Guardian, Stradivarius. Those are those are power metal bands. There's nothing else you can you can say. But yeah. um, but you know, I, I think the the funny part of power metal is that because it does get you into other bands and other styles, 
you could really say that <laughs> listening to Dragon Force could get you into Cannibal Corpse. Because it's all interconnected. You know, if you yeah. like Dragon Force, then maybe you get into Stradivarius, and that gets you into Nightwish, and then maybe you go from Nightwish to Camelot, and Camelot to My Dying Bride, My Dying Bride to Draconian, and eventually you kind of walk along this line, and the most ridiculous, cheesy, you know, uh, I can't even, I don't want to call Dragon Force power metal. What do you want to call them? Shtick metal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know, you go from from the the kings of shtick metal all the way to you know ridiculous like death metal, like brutal death metal, mm. and it's so funny to to think that you can get there on yeah. one road. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely gone through a lot of different uh, genres of metal, uh, starting with just the one. Makes you kind of want to sit down and write out a map. Let's well, they did that. Way you can do that. The uh, you know the, the guy from Metal a Headbanger's Journey. Uh, Sam Dunn had the entire map of, of metal and you know how each genre interconnects to another genre which oh, yeah. connects to something else and yeah that was interesting yeah you know, it all stems from like those original metal bands like Black Sabbath and everything kind of is a branch off of that and you know if you get into bands like this then all of a sudden you know you the thrash it. bands kind of get into the death metal bands and it's crazy and it just never ends it yeah, really never a, ends that was a great map you can see that on the DVD yep. Um, I really wish he would release that as like a wall poster. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely buy that and hang yeah. it up. Yeah. We'd be sitting here with a, a little laser pointer going, Now, Merman, are you saying <laughs> you go from the power metal here, and then you're going to follow this line over here, and then that's that's <laughs> shtick metal here. <laughs> shtick metal. Yeah, you'll find Dragon Force. And, here, and, and this will be the area where the bands do a lot of scrowling. <laughs> but it's, you know, power metal is definitely something to get into. And power metal is also something you could probably get your girlfriend into or your boyfriend into if they're not into metal. Yeah, I was just saying, it's, that's the one thing I, I would lean towards uh, to getting someone into metal that, that, that knows, knows yeah, nothing speaking, about it. Speaking from experience of not knowing much about mm -hmm. metal, yeah, I'd say that power metal is a good gate, like a good opening, like an introduction to metal. Mm -hmm. And just think about the similarities <clears throat> between power metal and classical music, because all power metal is based on classical right. compositions. Orchestrated instruments. Yep, yeah. so that's, that's huge too. That definitely makes it a little bit easier to spread it to someone who might not otherwise... Um, be into it and I think that's been one of our main goals in doing this site is really trying to spread some of this music that we enjoy uh, which hopefully some of you enjoy too yeah and uh, you know not just for you guys online but people we talk to in in the real world try to pass along a couple bands here and there mm -hmm. there's a couple of day-to-day couple... -day interactions with people at the store yeah day-to-day -day interactions which we we dread so much but, uh, you know, again, that's why if you guys click on the ads, we could quit our jobs, and we could just do this all the time, and then we wouldn't really have to talk to anybody. Yeah. We could just talk to you. Yeah, we could just talk all to you. Day, we can do podcasts day. all day. Yep. You know, um, if they click on the ads, I would even think about setting up a little mini metal corner show. Put it on YouTube. What do you mean a mini metal? What, you're going to sit out on the corner in front of the headquarters and just talk to random people? Well, no, we'll set something up, <laughs> chairs, we'll invite bands over, talk to them about their albums. I don't, I don't know how easy it would be to get bands uh, to we come to the headquarters. <laughs> we just go to Finland. Well, yeah, obviously we could just go to Finland. Uh, we, leave, we leave our lives here, we go to Finland. We, we yeah. would need to get new names. No, yeah. we just go with the names that we have right now. Yeah, we'll Chester, Hell yeah. 22, and Mermaid. Yeah, we'll just introduce right. ourselves to the locals. Hi, my name is Hell 22. Hell 22? <laughs> yes. I have read your site. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's Power Metal in a nutshell. Yeah. In a, I mean, a semi large nutshell of ranting <laughs> nonsensical <laughs> crap. Um, so, on the site, we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Uh, we have an interview with Brymere coming up, which is very exciting because uh, they were one of my favorite albums of the year thus far. So looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, as mentioned earlier, I've mentioned this band like now four times, uh, Echo Terra yeah. has agreed to do an interview as well. So we nice. get them uh, on the site as well. And I'm you know, looking forward to hear what they have to say. Uh, you know, it's definitely a, an upcoming band you want to keep an eye on. We'll have that one in a couple weeks, yep. hopefully. As soon as we get this stuff back, we do our best to you know rush it out to you guys because you know that's what it's for. It's for you. It's not for us. I mean, you know, it's cool for us. You know. Get the interview, get to read it and all, but uh, but you know, I was nice enough to post those Mastodon and Opeth tracks for you guys. The least you could do, click a link, yeah, click a link, and leave a comment or something, or buy a CD from our store. Oh yes, buy a CD from our store. Why should they do that, Mermit? Because it's cheaper. Because <laughs> I roll <laughs> so my eyes. <laughs> I'll actually give you an example. Uh, the Alcest EP, Lay Secret, uh, 
re-released is like three dollars, three dollars for an hour of music, mm -hmm. three dollars. See, I'm speaking in like a doom metal thing. Not tree fitty. No, not tree fitty. Actually, I actually think it's like three twenty-six. Oh. After tax. After tax, it's probably about three fifty. Um, <laughs> so about three fifty. <laughs> but yeah, so there's no reason not to buy some good albums from the store, and you know, you get them cheaper and do what you want with them. Uh, make sure you also check out Spotify, as pointed out on uh, mm. last Sunday. We didn't get to do a podcast because uh, Mermaider was uh, violently ill. Yeah, um, I'm all right now. Now that I have my new phone. Food. Yeah, he just needed. He he was infected by a horrible phone. <laughs> um, so you know, so last week I kind of urged you guys to go check out Spotify, and I, I hope that you've done that because it's an easy way for everyone to get paid: the labels, the bands, bands yeah. the industry on the whole. I mean, yeah. We don't get paid, which should probably work out some sort of deal where we get paid. <laughs> but uh, either way, you know, check that out. So, uh, guys, do you have anything else we need to add this week? Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, okay. <laughs>